Welcome to this episode. In this episode, I'll be presenting on the influencing factors for metallic powder bed fusion 3D printing processes. So let's begin. So to begin, let's begin with a misconception. I think due to much hype from the media, it can be easily believed that metallic 3D printing is an easy and amazing technology that creates metal objects by just a click of a button. But hopefully in this presentation, you'll see that just how complex metallic powder bed fusion 3D printing process is, and it's not as easy as what you might think at first. So let me first introduce the powder bed fusion for metallic materials. What, what is the process like? So firstly, you, the powder bed is usually prepared by a powder delivery system. Either it uses a rake or a roller, as can be seen in the image on the right. And then an energy source, it can be a laser beam or an electron beam, is used to selectively melt or sinter the powder bed. Once the cross-section is done, another layer of powder is layered over the melted cross-section by the powder delivery system. This process is repeated until a fully completed solid 3D object is created from the process. So next. So with a brief understanding of how the powder bed fusion process works, let me begin with the main bulk of the presentation, which is an overview of the general influencing factors in powder bed fusion metallic 3D printing. So firstly, there are four main categories, equipment, material, process parameters, and part orientation. In the following slides, we will go through each of the subheaders. So next. So under equipment, there are three main points. Firstly, maintenance of, of the equipment is important to ensure that the inner chamber of the equipment is clean so as that you ensure purity in your part and to prevent contamination. Secondly, calibration of the laser or electron beam is sometimes needed for specific machines before the process is used. So such calibration will ensure the accuracy of your part when it's built. Lastly, there are also control and feedback of the process done by the machine automatically and you as the human operator has to ensure that the machine is functioning the properly. For example, the machine automatically regulates the inert atmosphere or the vacuum condition in your machine. So you just want to ensure that all the feedback parameters are within specifications. If, if they're not within specifications, then the property materials might be affected task. So with that in mind, let's move on to the next influencing factor, which is material. I think material is very important in powder bed fusion processes. Firstly, because of the flowability of metallic powder, not all powders can flow very well initially if, if the powder is not made for this powder bed fusion processes. Why? Because you really need powders that are spherical and uniform in shape and they are usually pretty fine in the range of around 100 microns and less. The next factor is the chemical composition. So these, these metallic powders are reused after each build. So you want to make sure that the chemical composition is within the limits because such metallic powders can pick up oxygen from the environment and the presence of oxygen will create oxides and it will probably be detrimental to the process and also to the mechanical properties of the material built. So yeah, next. So the next influencing factor is process parameters. One of the most common process parameters that people know is called the energy density equation. So energy density equals the laser power over scan speed scan spacing and layer height. So with this formula, people have always done research to optimize the process parameters so that, so that different materials can be used. So this changing these parameters has significant effect on your S-built part. So the next factor is the scanning strategy. So there are various scanning strategies for various machines. It can be either stripe or it could be either checkered box or it could be like double scan. So you can see from this image what the energy density equation is trying to show. You can see that the lines between each 
scan each scanning can be very varying of distance some can be close some can be further apart and then the scan speed how fast the laser scan through the line and also how thick is each layer of powder height that you want to scan so the thicker the layer height the build might be faster however the thinner the layer height it might be longer but the thinner layer height might might introduce remelting which might sort of reduce some residual stress in your part so the next the next point is on the working atmosphere so whether your working atmosphere is inert environment or a vacuum environment this will have effect on the process itself because if you have a vacuum environment I think the flowability of the powder is different as compared to an inert environment so this is something that you have to take note of and this is what people are researching on so yeah next so lastly we have the part orientation whether you place the part vertically or longitudinal orientation will affect the formation of the metallic microstructure and it has been widely reported to have an effect on the mechanical properties likewise so the microstructure for a layman's term you can think of a microstructure as in the grains of a, of a tree trunk so the tree grains usually grow parallel to the direction of the tree trunk so this is the same with the microstructure of the metal grains. So the next point is the support structures. So support structures will affect the processing of part by because support structure acts by removing heat away from the electron beam melt spot and this removing of heat is very important so that the any specific location does not get overheated and thus the accuracy of the part is reduced if the specific point of position is overheated so these are the general influencing factors so, next. so with that we we'll, we'll reach to the summary of this presentation so hopefully by the end of this presentation you are able to understand various influencing factors in the metallic powder bed fusion process by first be able to describe the metallic powder bed fusion process secondly to be able to state and explain various influencing factors in the powder bed fusion process such as equipment, material process, material process parameters, and part orientation. With this, I thank you for listening to the presentation. Once again, I thank all the references for their valuable data and images and information, and I couldn't have done it without them. Thanks very much, and the end.